I was dreading arriving at the Hole in the Wall gang camp, expecting to be torn to pieces at the sight of 120 really sick kids looking really sick and really out of place in the Connecticut woods. Well, it isn't like that. At all. They've been at it for 25 years now. I'd like to take a minute, just sit right there. I'll tell you how to become a camper extraordinaire. All because actor Paul Newman said that kids who've spent too much time in hospitals deserve to raise a little hell. Bring up, bring up. Open the door or that's it. I work for Mr. E.H. Harriman. The name of the camp and its Old West look were inspired by the gang of train robbers who raised considerable hell. In Butch Cassidy and the Sundance Kid, Paul Newman played Butch, Robert Redford, Sundance. That's what you're good at. Their hideout was the hole in the wall. Butch Cassidy's hole in the wall gang, that's me. Paul Newman donated $8.4 million, nearly half the cost of building the camp and then running it for the first two years after it opened in 1988. It became his own personal hole in the wall, where campers didn't know him as a movie star or the founder of Newman's Own Foods. You no, know, the famous story that the cart, he was sitting at the lunch table, the carton of lemonade was sitting there and a kid said, Kid looked at his picture on the lemonade and said something like, are you lost? Are you... <laughs> <laughs> he looked at my father, looked at the lemonade. Are you missing? <laughs> so it's like what on milk cartons where they have kids yes. who are missing? Yes. The actor's daughter, Lissy, is the Newman at camp now, a member of the board and volunteer four years after her father's death. A lot of these kids, they just, they live for camp, literally. There are a lot of stories about kids where their doctors didn't think they were going to be able to make it to camp, and they say, no, 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 I'm coming to camp, and they make it to camp. So, I mean, amazing stories. At the time I came here, I'd only made a few days of school, probably 30 that whole year. 30 days in the whole year you went to school? And I only made 20 days last year. But Liam Talbot made it to camp. Okay, so Liam's got some questions for us. Yeah! Can I trust this team? You can trust us, Liam! And he does. 14, a fourth-year camper, Liam has metabolic and mitochondrial disease, which leave him weak and incapacitated, isolated, except here. This is a community, it's a family, it's a home. Is it fun? It's more than fun, it is just people who understand you and due to your limitations they deal with your limitations and somehow help you surpass them like the climbing tower look at this it was kind of nice just to be normal here not be the one that stands out because no one here cares what you've been through, because everyone's done it. I don't have to be judged as that girl. Which 13-year-old Roxy Kubis was when she was diagnosed with Burkitt's lymphoma. Friends deserted her. She came to camp last year hurt and scared. I wouldn't really eat. I was so nervous, because all camps say, no put-downs, no violence, but there's always bullying. But then I came here and I was like, no, this camp is the one camp that is no bullying. Everyone is nice and gets along. The hard part about hearing these stories is how old these kids sound for their age. I didn't eat a lot, so I had to have a feeding tube. This was Hallie Middleton during her first year, when she was seven, being treated for brain cancer. The camp can handle complicated care. Look at her now, at age nine. I'm gonna be a teacher. I want to be a teacher, and when you're a teacher, you don't have anything to do during the summer, and so I can be a counselor at Hole in the Wall. And when I'm a counselor, I can be here for a very long time. 
Around a third of the councillors were once campers. All right, here we go. Martel Johnson is almost there. He was a so-called leader in training this summer. He has sickle cell disease. My first time at camp, I was seven years old. When normal was hospital, normal was, okay, you have to stay in the bed. In other words, no, no, no. No, no, and, and here was, everything was yes. 18 now, starting his freshman year in college. Markel wants to pass on his experience. I want to be a counselor to help give these kids one of the best weeks of their lives. It has fluffy gills. There are nine one-week sessions a summer, plus weekends in the spring and fall. Camp is free. Mostly, kids are referred by their doctors or by hospitals in the Northeast. The ratio of staff to campers is nearly one to one. Safety is a very big deal, but so is fun. We're connected to about 20 different trees, a 350 feet of ramp that leads to a 600 square foot treehouse. To be up 30 feet high in the air and um, to, to immerse yourself in childhood, and then that's what the camp is about. Jimmy Canton was a counselor the summer the camp opened. Now, he's CEO. In 1988, the camp saw 288 children that very first summer. And uh, today we'll serve more than 20,000 seriously ill children and family members in a year. So the camp has grown enormously over the last 25 years. The Hole in the Wall Gang Camp and its related programs now have a budget of $10 million a year, money that comes from 25,000 different donors, in addition to the Newman's own foundation, Paul Newman's Charity. Have you ever done archery before? No, but no. it looks cool. Doesn't it? The place is still about forgetting sickness for a week. For many of our parents, it's the first time in their lives since their child was born that they've ever been a night away from their child. So um, it's a massive responsibility and an enormous privilege to be given that trust. Was that a severe hemophilia A? Um, it's a pretty rare bleeding disorder. People with hemophilia can bleed anywhere. They can bleed in any organ, any muscle, any joint. So Zach Stengel's parents worried. The first year that you all came um, was pretty scary. Oh, yeah. It, it was scary. Well, and not for me. I get popcorn, a real awesome raspberry snow cone. That was Zach, a small boy in a big hat, three years ago at age eight. Just that one week of independence, I think, gave him confidence, gave him the feeling that he can do anything. I put this on here. Even tough things. Put it in. His second year, one of Zach's counselors was Colin Lynch, also a hemophiliac and a former camper himself. He taught Zach to give himself his daily injection of a drug that allows his blood to clot. The procedure is difficult. But this year, at age 10, he's a pro. Bam. Gotten a lot better over the last year. Thanks. You're really good at that. Thanks. The children have each other. I don't think anyone expected. They didn't anticipate the healing that would come about from a child looking out and seeing a sea of other children like themselves and knowing that perhaps for the first time in their lives they're not alone. And that raising a little hell can be good for you.